The Sabine region is found on the beautiful slopes of Mount Elgon in northeastern Uganda. It comprises of Kapchora, Queen and Buko districts. Their land is gifted by natural beauty with popular tourist spots like the CP Falls in Kapchora district. The Sabine belong to a tribal group of people classified as Nile Hamites. They speak a Kup Sabine language of the Nandi cluster, now known as the Kalenjin. Although their population statistics are a bit confusing, it is estimated to be about 0.6% of Uganda's population. In the Sabine culture, they carry out female genital mutilation every even year. They also circumcise males. The REACH program organizes the annual Culture Day celebrations, which are attended by both the locals and the foreigners. It's generally a platform where all stakeholders come together. To remind people of the bad cultures that they may think it was of benefit to them. At the same time, it is an, uh, it's an avenue where we discourage uh, the harmful uh, practices such as FGM. We would like to carry out the poems, we would like to carry out the drama, we would like to carry out other citations that indicate that surely the culture, much as the Sabines, uh, cherish it, but it is to, to the people's disadvantage. The chief guest, Speaker of the Ninth Parliament, Honorable Rebecca Kadaga, and Honorable Chris Bariomusi, the mover and sponsor of the FGM bill, arrive at the event. Advantage ya kutahiri saa hiyo ni kaa. Our ancestors, most of them were herdsmen, most of them were warriors, they could go far. So the, the idea of removing the genitals of women uh, was to reduce the sexual urge of a woman. The people who were born in the village were born in the village. Imagine I just took it when I was just very young. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know the reason why I had to pass through it. I was just taken up because I just saw it was exactly something that you have to do. My wife was circumcised through force. They have to take you around five down to the riverside for rituals. They have something that they put in you that will make your private part like uh, the abuse and anesthesia. And then by that tomorrow, you are just like a confused person. You are not like a normal person anymore. They have to use a knife to cut all your glitteries out everything and then before they cut they use uh, yeast to pour inside so that it will not be slippery. So that's why before they cut she must lie for some time that people will be able to see inside her and they will prove that she's a virgin. You know there is a word in, in Kupsabi that is said chair one Chair one is, is cutting, and that word means sent away. If the girl has been circumcised, however much she may, she may be in which stage, she is fit to go away from home and get married. Because they tell you, you must be circumcised in order to stay well in your marriage. 
Gajam Lekotabanum, the Gajam Sandenion, Las Majorno Ganga, which is a good. So Gingale Kyoji get to Tirchin Vigo, Sunget Kubata Indino. May Majorning Emanaja or Nile may make a empatata, may Melon Yamba Joke, may Muembas go theatre. He conditions John the Gingale Kyoji. Interesting, kiu 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 itni biga kabsa. There are many effects that has affected girls after circumcision. It is shameful things you just expose yourself to the public. And meanwhile, as you are lying, the father is beside with the two spears. In case you make an alarm, the father will kill you. And the mother will be having a mingling stick to beat you up. I have ever witnessed someone who is circumcised, and that was just our neighbor, of which during, her, during when they were circumcising her, she, she alarmed of which everybody split on her because she ashamed the parents, everybody, and they neglected her. At the end of the cut, everybody begins celebrating. It is you to suffer with the pain that you've incurred. You may either produce or you may not produce because there are some veins that they cut. And when they cut these veins, it is connected to the organs of a woman. So to affect, at times you may end up producing and you become lame. Sister, mama, look at them. It's culture. Eh, look at us. The real true breed of Africa. You call yourself true brothers, yet your culture disguises me. No matter what it does, but my culture remains mine. You call it culture. I say it's nonsense because your tongue is like snake's poison. You say my tongue is worse than snake's poison because I demanded for my right, my right to be circumcised. Eh? You, you see, open under your thighs, only but blisters and scars. I was born on it. I'm proud of it. But you seem to speak speak sense. Africa, free from FGM is our joy. Let's join together and condemn female genital mutilation among ourselves, the Kalijins. Long live Uganda, long live Bukwa, long live Amana. Our motto, discipline and hard work for God and my country. Thank you. <laughs> It has stopped me from being immoral. I can even stay for a year without having a man. He will not have too much lust looking for other men while he has his. And he also it promotes Sabine's culture. Even our grand grandmothers were circumcised. If a girl is circumcised, then he has freedom in their family. They come from families where culture is cherished. La Fraya culture. So, that's the boys should stop pressurizing the girls to get circumcised and they should also resolve not to marry circumcised girls so that the practice can end because it, I think it is demand driven. The boys demand it and then the girls are forced to undergo it. The hajj for sex is cut off. That's why you see most people who are circumcised. 
They always divorce because of lack of satisfaction. Because they believe that if he stayed with the husband, he will have a false pregnancy, which will lead to a mysterious disease, which will eventually kill you. And instead of being a companion to each other, they even got the extent of hating each other. So you find that the men now end up suffering. Long time ago, we used to go naked. So we reached somewhere, we said we should respect each other. We didn't have clothes. So knowledge came that we should use leaves. So that we are able to uh, protect some areas. Uh, uh, like that. This is the woman, the girl. You have seen what is in her, on her hand. Something she has put on her, in her mouth. Yes, she has a new baby. Uh, she has a new baby. Uh, she that shows that when a girl has reached circumcision A, that was uh, what was used. The decoration you are saying. We used to eat uh, sorghum and millet. Uh, those, uh, those are the things. What he's holding. That is a stone. Long time ago, we didn't have pangas. We didn't have knives. Those are the things we used to do. I use actually for killing animals. So when an animal is in the tree, we could actually throw, and that animal would actually fall. After we have killed the animal, using the stone, using the stone, we now get the, the, the that skin there. So we say that one can be like it can be used as a cloth. That man actually used it as a cloth to cover his, uh, his body. That uh, what you see him holding, he doesn't have a stone, he has actually pro uh, progressed. We have now made a spear and a sword, I mean, the, yeah, sword. So that one is used for protection. Yeah. <laughs> the clothes they are wearing, they have progressed from the skin, they have gone to the back, uh, back cloth. Where they are holding, the, especially the man, we have made this, uh, these arrows so that they can use it for killing the animals. What is behind him, that one is used for carrying the, the arrows. So the, the woman, you have seen her uh, even having the, the drum. That drum. It has so many uses in Kapchorwa. When you want to go to rescue some animals, you alert the people. When there is celebration, it is also used for celebration. Yes. You have seen some small gourds. There is something that is used to put, they, they, they use for uh, putting the north, the north, the north strings. So when you go for war, they, you need strength. That yeah. one adds some strength. So when you see that there are some sticks that is holding, hold those, stone, uh, those sticks and we see, there are the other sticks. It has some finger like a uh, uh, thing. Uh, yeah. Like it shows that one shows wealth uh, of animals, cows. It has so many cows. Uh, the, the other one, on the other hand, that one is, uh, is, is, is used for taking beer. She keeps milk for her husband, which means actually she keeps her husband very well. You try to check that goat, please, and we see. Uh -huh. She wants to feed her husband. The, 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 the milk is actually so heavy. We are now here. This is, you where, you we are. This is where we are now. I can't, I can't actually say much. Uh, the world has advanced. You have seen the woman. She has a bag. She has made her hair. The man has a phone. The bag. He, he loves his wife. They are smart. This is how the world has gone. Be watchful. Have you seen? See, see. Yes, see them. See how the world has gone. From leaves. You have seen where it has reached.
Marlon Gay Nanget. I think by, by what he has done, Marlon he has actually shown himself. Whatsapps. Whatsapps. Give him the word Whatsapps. The Whatsapp generation. So we have to still work more with the school children, with the young generation. So that they get the message early and grow up with a good message. Because once you expose people to the inf right information and they see the disadvantages, then they will gradually leave it. We know that it is not practical to legislate culture. If you legislate it, people will find a way of circumventing it and the culture continues. So when you go out to educate people on the harmful aspects of FG, it means handling the whole family life, which calls for a lot of time and uh, a lot of skill, which at times is beyond what we have. <laughs> They operate in the darkness. You can imagine my mommy with her poor eyes working in darkness and cutting somebody in darkness. The chances of cutting something wrong are very high. That's how the people get mutilated. That's how their nerves get cut. Mama, we are going to make sure that what the president promised he fulfills so that you can live a good life. So just yet, the president They do it both for the culture and for money. Because many of them claim they started cutting because the spirits attacked them. So that's why they gave in to doing the cutting. We thought that if we find them alternative means, they can end the practice. It's not giving them money directly. It's just um, involving them in a development program, in a generating um, income activities. Like farming, um, like uh, trading and so forth. But on the other hand, I don't think that this really can end FGM uh, because if, for example, if everything starts from the family, from the girls them, themselves, if the girls say no to FGM, if the parents say no to FGM, I don't think that mutilator can come and force them and cut them forcefully. When we reached the Capri record, there was an old man. It was an old man who insisted that he would not leave and they would not leave. They would not stop that culture. It is their culture, so they will continue. We need to have some spice in the villages. Those are the people who can help us with information immediately and their telephone contacts. Otherwise, most of these people are not cooperative. We have to do what we can to save our girls and women from female gender mutilation. What rich program can do is the uh, preventive part of it, and that's what we also expect the law enforcement to do, to do the preventive part of it. During the talk show in the radio, we need to warn those people. Some of the two women who are cut, some of the one who did the cutting, and also some of the husbands yeah. of those women. We have distributed to each of those women copies of the FGM Act. The law that uh, the government has enacted, the Parliament of Uganda, through the program of REACH, has helped us so much. It calls for a lot of patience in working with the people. Today, they may chase you out of this community, but when you become patient in working with the community, two, three years down the road, they will invite you, come, tell us about the harmful aspects of FGM. We want people to own this change. When people own the change, then they will make sure that the thing is eradicated naturally. Girls run from Bujiri, girls run from Bukwo, they run to office. Now, for us, we don't have a place to house them. So we thought of constructing this building so that when they run like that, then they can be able to be housed and they, they actually get all the facilities that they would want there. When you look at Amdad, FGM is still very high. It's still over 90 percent, and there are so many girls who are always being forced to the practice. At the end of the day, they want to run away, but they don't have where to run to. So sometimes they can run to, to, to the school, which of course is also difficult to be sustained. So to ease the movement, connecting from one village to the other is very difficult, so they need something to move them faster. If we get enough funding, we shall be able to procure some, of, some motorcycles. So we only have one vehicle. So we need to have a plan of having another car so that we can be able to move effectively to the, to the different areas. Ta-da!
hapa maji jua tuna maji nyumbani hata three quarters or maybe a half way of the people do not have even toilets people go to the bush and eat themselves in the bush so during rainy season there is that massive erosion this is a hill area all the fishes all the wastes are just to the river all our people fetch water from these rivers and they don't even boil by the way there is even purifying only people take it locally like that the same person taking has no toilet <laughs> And you see, and if it has a toilet, then it's the poorest toilet. You cannot enter inside. You have to squeeze yourself somehow. So there has been always an outbreak of diarrhea, dysentery, cholera, typhoid, malaria, and many other illnesses caused by either waterborne or airborne. We want the government to help us to get the water. There is no processing plan here. So we sell them raw as it is at the low value. And by the way, during harvesting, the prices are too low that we cannot even afford to bring back the returns of uh, the, the, the investments, the inputs that you have invested in. Some of the raw materials, we have our natural forest here. We also have the artificial forest. All the harvested materials are being transported to Kenya. I have never seen lorries of timber taking out timber to Ugandan industries. They are all being taken here. Even if, if we are still here for some few minutes, you will find just lorries taking out timber ferrying to Kenya. Even the offcuts, they go to Kenya. Actually, we have so many raw materials, some are undiscovered. But the uh, major of them which have been discovered, they have not been exploited to the maximum. It broke the best frame. It has been breaking it. So I resorted to put this timber now just to replace my base frame, which has broken down. No place to weld it because there is no power. Fuel we buy from Kenya. Kenyan fuel has been taxed. You are taxed in Kenya again to cross with their fuel. You are taxed in Uganda to have brought Kenya's fuel. Reaching here, you would want to put at least a fair price to return. People say, ah, oh, you are fixing us. You again lower the prices of grinding. There is no institution even to borrow money for maybe getting fertilizers, getting seeds. You want to invest on business of farming. No input. We don't have anywhere to go. So you just remain planting either the seed which you planted last year. <laughs> you return it back. Poor yields, poor market. And I think that's why our community is suffering much more. Actually, the schools are there, but there are very few. Like uh, this community from above the river, they don't have even a, a good school. Children have to cross the river. The same river has no bridge, bridges. So you'll find children always being swept during rainy season. Children are being taken with the, uh, uh, maybe floods because there are no bridges. The schools are far. Secondary schools, no institution like even a university. No other small courses. Even if you want to go for maybe a small certificate, you don't, there is no institution to offer courses. The schools uh, which are were promised in Amudat, in Kwen, in Kongasis, and in Tingay. So the Minister of Education has told me that uh, she's going to put the four schools in the budget for this new financial year. It was made because the President was concerned about what has happened to the girls in this region. So let us help him to fulfill this place. So let us help him to fulfill this place. Actually, I think you have known that this community produces the best runners in Uganda. And uh, they are good also in doing that. But there is no motivation. Here is Mount Elegon, Mount Kadam is across. So you find that the road network is quite poor. And uh, during the rainy seasons, it becomes very hard to effectively implement activities and also monitor uh, what is happening in the field. So that hampers the achievement of our project goals. In case somebody lacks even blood, we have to travel him to either Kapchora or Mbale, just for blood transfusion, imagine that. But between here to Mbale is more than 80 miles, and that, that one could cost that person as well. Most people die on the road <laughs> as they're being taken for medical checkups. <laughs> Ibaran narumbau lagi, macam kumnyarit. 
I'm also sorry uh, about our road. I use it each year when I come. I and all these members have been speaking for this road in Parliament. Now we have added somebody in the cabinet. We now have a, a new member of, of Buko in the cabinet, the minister here. I think it would have been so beneficial if she can really forward the problems of Buko to the parliament. And not only forwarding, but also fighting for the problems of Buko to be achieved. So if the speak of parliament, really who is the eyewitness of the problems of Buko, actually divines this. His Excellency, the President, has never used this road ever since he has been traveling to Bukwa. He travels on air because the roads are poor. And I believe if His Excellency could also travel on road, he would see really how rough our roads and how rough we are living in. He comes, addresses the people, he goes out on air. <laughs> Kutagoi Bukwa Kini around any capture work on the Bukwa Arnie Miakut. We can make it better. Uh, if we were able to, for instance, to uh, give them water near their homes, if we were able to give them more schools near their homes so they don't have to walk many distances, I think that that would make a difference in their lives. So we can make it better.